I want to share with you a couple of lessons I learned through creating our permaculture gardens that have allowed me to grow and scale my business to an asset value of over eight figures and uh, also develop an abundance of fresh fruit and veg. Let me share some insights. So for those of you who don't know, uh, we've created an animal sanctuary uh, about three and a half years ago now. We rescued over 100 animals and uh, we practice what we call permaculture, which is the idea of replicating forests, much like what we're surrounded with, in the environment of creating stuff that provides uh, fresh fruit and vegetables for us and for our animals. Um, it's been a very interesting process because I've never had any experience with farming, with growing anything. I definitely didn't have a green thumb. And heading into this, I didn't actually think that was going to be a lot of lessons uh, from the experiences that we have on Aureus Acres that I could translate back into my business. In fact, I actually thought it was going to be a direct contrast to my business. But uh, I'm actually mistaken. So I'm going to share with you a couple of insights that I've developed along the way. Now, the first thing is that you don't go and embark on something like this unless you have a goal. And um, it is difficult. It's a lot of hard work, particularly when you're under the kind of scorching sun of, uh, of the far north Queensland uh, tropics. It's a very harsh environment. So the first thing you need is you got to have a really clear goal, much like in business. If you don't have a goal that aligns with your purpose, with why, with what you're doing and why you're doing it, your ability to see that through to the end is very, very difficult. For any business owner who has done something just out of the blind pursuit of money, uh, typically I've seen them not be able to sustain it. There's usually a two to three year cycle. They might be able to go full stick. From that point, they burn out if they're even successful at all. We have a goal here of wanting to get to self-sufficiency and wanting to provide an abundance of fresh fruit and veg for our animals, uh, but also to be able to teach other entrepreneurs uh, how to connect back with the land, uh, how to grow fresh fruit and veg, to be able to provide them with, uh, with kind of that, that food security, uh, because let's face it, it's pretty expensive. So that's our, our mission of what we're working towards. There's a fundamental mission and there's an aspirational mission that we want to aspire to get to. We've got 70 beautiful tropical acres. Uh, we've started a, a kind of a test project here to develop the philosophy and then we're going to replicate that out over the property. The second lesson is start small. Our ambitions can sometimes outweigh uh, our skill set and our abilities. And this is definitely uh, true for me in the context of uh, growing stuff, right? Um, the, the ability of growing anything. I've never done anything like it before. And I'm like, ah, I'm successful in business. Um, uh, I can work it out. I'm a smart person. The skill sets aren't universally transferable. For example, it's taken us over three years to uh, work out a way to get our avocados to be able to grow. And uh, now they're, they're growing in abundance. So we needed to start small. And the idea of starting small is that we needed to fail small. Uh, so then we can learn from those experiments and then iterate. I see so many people in business uh, set these big lofty ambitions and they fail big. Because failure is inevitable. We're always gonna fail on the journey, but it's about failing in a controlled environment uh, that isn't going to hit you for a six and set you back years, potentially decades in the process. The third part is being patient. This is probably the most valuable lesson that I've learnt. Um, for example, a lot of these fruit trees that I've planted aren't gonna bear fruit for 10, in some cases, 15 years. But I need to enjoy it for the small stuff. So like this is kaffa lime, being able to enjoy uh, the, the leaves, being able to use that in our cooking, things like that. Um, being able to take what we can, enjoying the process and uh, using that as a means of not having so much waiting towards the outcomes themselves. Because yeah, we've planted things that are already uh, providing us with yield, but the vast majority of this stuff isn't going to provide a lot of value to us for a decade. And being patient in that process is a really critical skill to learn, particularly as someone with that neurodivergency. Um, I don't like waiting for anything. And, uh, and you can't rush this process. Yes, we've got an abundance of beautiful sun. We've got an abundance of water here. Um, a lot of nutrition, uh, nutrients that we're pumping back into the soil to get things to grow faster, but you still can't rush it. You might cut a year or two uh, off the journey. And the same thing goes for business. I see so many business owners, once again, swinging for the fences, wanting to get rich quick, wanting to uh, reap the rewards uh, much faster than, frankly, they deserve. And sure, I want you to get results quickly, but you've got to realize that the, the best results, the most sustainable results, often take time and you've got to trust that process and you've got to be prepared to wait. And you've also got to be observant because for example here, as I roam around each day and I see what's going on, uh, I pick up little things that allow me to 
get gratification like this little tomato here. Um, that feeds the soul. That leads me to the next one. Celebrating the small wins. Because this doesn't come easy. Uh, it requires that strategy. It requires that patience. It requires the experimentation. Being able to give yourself permission to enjoy the little wins, the little tomatoes that you find uh, as you walk through the garden. All of these uh, experiences that you have make it all more worthwhile. I see so many business owners getting caught up in the pursuit of what is next. Um, they don't actually take the time to show gratitude for what they've created in the process, right? Um, celebrating the success uh, and not comparing themselves to others because comparison is the thief of joy. I see plenty of other people that have these uh, amazing food forests or businesses that are much bigger than mine, higher yielding than mine. But I've come to accept that I need to run my own race. I need to celebrate my own wins and successes. And uh, this isn't a competition. If anything, it's a competition against myself. I want to be better than I was yesterday, but not as good as I'm going to be tomorrow. So a little bit of a random video here, guys. Maybe you think I'm a raging hippie. Um, but I think what's interesting is that all of this experience has distills perfectly back down into business. And the whole idea of permaculture is about creating a system that fulfills itself. It leaves more than is taken away. It's contributing value back to that system. And I think that's what we should be aspiring towards in business. We should have a business that provides us with amazing yield. It gives us the fruits of our labor, uh, but it contributes more back to society, to our clients, to our team, than we take away as business owners. And if more people understand this, they're gonna have a far more successful business. Let me know your thoughts.